For all of recorded history, humans have been trying to outdo each other with bigger and more opulent structures. Buildings like the Taj Mahal, Empire State Building, and the Eiffel Tower seem to get all of the attention, but there are many other properties that test the limits of opulence and grandeur. From desert skyscrapers to German palaces, we're counting down the 10 most impressive buildings in the world. Described as both a vertical city and a living wonder, Burj Khalifa, developed by Dubai-based Imar Properties, is the world's tallest building. Rising gracefully from the desert, Burj Khalifa honors the city with its extraordinary union of art, engineering, and meticulous craftsmanship. At 828 meters, the 200-story Burj Khalifa has over 160 habitable stories, the most of any building in the world. The tower was inaugurated on January 4, 2010, to coincide with the fourth anniversary of the accession day of Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum as the ruler of Dubai. Arguably the world's most prestigious address, Burj Khalifa is responsible for a number of world firsts. The tower became the world's tallest man-made structure just 1,325 days after excavation work started in January 2004. The Burj Khalifa is also the tallest freestanding structure in the world, has the highest number of stories in the world, the highest occupied floor in the world, the highest outdoor observation deck in the world, the elevator with longest travel distance in the world, and the tallest service elevator in the world. It's three times as tall as the Eiffel Tower and nearly twice as tall as the Empire State Building. Laid end to end, its pieces stretch over a quarter of the way around the world. This building is truly the epitome of opulence and wealth, with the price tag over $1.5 billion just for the initial construction. Also located in the wealthy Arab Emirate of Dubai, the Burj Al Arab is considered by many people to be the most luxurious hotel in the world. Since its opening in late 1999, the hotel, with its distinctive sail-shaped silhouette, has thrust Dubai onto the global luxury tourism landscape. Built on a triangular, man-made island reclaimed from the sea, the hotel and its billowing sail-like structure rise 321 meters above the sea, offering panoramic views of the Arabian Gulf. Construction began in 1994 and involved 3,000 companies and contractors, 250 designers from the UK, USA, and Dubai, and 3,500 workmen on site at any given time. It took two years to reclaim the island in the shore waters of the Arabian Gulf, and a further three years to erect the magnificent landmark. And the building isn't just impressive because of its massive stature. Approximately 1,790 square meters of 24 karat gold leaf were used to embellish the interior. The palatial 780 square meter royal suite is fit for a maharaja, with an exquisite Mashli style lounge, library, and cinema room, along with two master bathrooms, each with full size jacuzzis and separate five head rain showers. And this is to say nothing of the lavish amenities. Take your pick from an underwater aquarium restaurant reached through a simulated submarine voyage, heralded by famed and award winning chef Nathan Outlaw, a fleet of Rolls Royces on the forecourt, and the famous helipad that has hosted the likes of Tiger Woods, Anthony Joshua, and Roger Federer. Not to be confused with the tiny European nation of Liechtenstein. Liechtenstein Castle is located in the southwest state of Baden-Württemberg in Germany, overlooking the village of Hunau. The castle is actually a hunting lodge, built on the ruins of a former castle, and the current structure was completed in 1842. It was built in a pseudo-medieval style, which was in vogue in the 19th century. Since then, it has grown in both size and notoriety. Famously, it competes with Neuschwanstein Castle, which was the model for the Disney Castle. As such, the residents around the Liechtenstein property prefer the term Little Fairy Tale Castle, and it's easy to understand why. The massive structure is packed with royal chambers, an ornate courtyard, and an armory full of vintage artillery and cannons. The castle's outer escarpment opens up directly onto a cliff. Though it looks precarious, the building is safely secured, hopefully guaranteeing that it will stand for another thousand years. This tilting tower is a household name. The gentle lean of the 14th century Italian structure is immediately recognizable. In 1172, Donaberta di Bernardo donated 60 silver coins to the local cathedral for the purchase of stones to be used in the base of a new bell tower. The next year, construction of the tower began, and almost immediately there were problems. The tower site sat on soft ground composed mostly of clay, fine sand, and shells. By the time the builders finished the second floor in 1178, the tower was beginning to lean. But then construction was halted for almost 100 years, as peace of fought wars against Genoa, Lucca, and Florence. This may have been a lucky break, as modern analysis says that the tower definitely would have toppled had construction continued without time for the soil to settle. Thus, what could have been a fatal architectural flaw became the defining feature of an otherwise unremarkable tower. Today, the Leaning Tower of Pisa is one of Italy's top tourist destinations. The tower gathers over 5 million visitors each year, and it makes about 21 million euro annually. 
This series of suspended monasteries usually elicits a gasp from visitors. Perched at death-defying heights, the structures were first built in 491 AD and have survived for many centuries since then. Clinging to a crag of the Hengshan Mountain, in apparent defiance of gravity, the temple consists of 40 rooms linked by a dizzying maze of passageways. Interestingly, the temple is dedicated to not just one religion, but three, with Confucianism, Taoism, and Buddhism all practiced within the temple, and represented in 78 statues and carvings throughout the temple. How could a building like this withstand the winds and storms of so many years? Hanging Monastery is an architectural wonder. A unique mechanical theory was applied to building the framework. Cross beams were half inserted into the rock at the foundation, while the rock and back became its support. Why build a monastery like this? Location is the first reason. Building a monastery on the cliff could shield it from floods. In addition, the mountain peak protects it from rain and snow, and the mountain around it also diminishes damage from longtime sunshine. The second reason is that the builders followed a principle in Taoism. No noise, including those from rooster crowing and dog baying. So from the upper ground, all noises drop away. Lloyd's Building is the headquarters of the famous Lloyd's of London Insurance Institution. It has a unique design that stands out significantly against the backdrop of the other buildings at 1 Lime Street in the City of London. Lloyd's Building was originally designed by Richard Rogers, an architect that had worked on numerous projects throughout the world. Rogers was one of two architects that designed the famed Pompidou Center in Paris, France. Rogers began his design in the mid-1970s and completed construction in 1986. Most notably, the building has most of its elevators and escalators in the open air. There are a total of 12 glass elevators attached to the outside of the building. The building is 289 feet tall and has a total of 14 floors. It cost roughly 75 million pounds to complete the project and was contracted by Bovis Property Development. Many consider the bizarre industrial architecture to be the most remarkable in the world. The building also contributed to the scenery in many movies, including Guardians of the Galaxy, Avengers, Mamma Mia, and Trainspotting. Palo Taksong, also known as the Tiger's Nest Monastery, is a small religious complex hung far up on a cliff overlooking a spectacular valley. It is one of only a handful of locations where the second incarnation of Buddha is believed to have practiced. The monastery itself is located in a dramatic setting, perched on a high cliff some 3,000 feet above Paro Valley and a vertiginous 10,240 feet above the sea level. The route to the top is difficult. It takes a two to three hour trek to reach the cave walking amidst the beautiful shady pine forests. The Paro Taksong Monastery consists of four main temples which are interconnected with staircases carved on the rock. The interior of the Taksong Monastery reflects the luxury and wealth in the finest way. While the dome of the monastery is gold-plated and decorated with illuminating golden idols, the inside of Paro Taksong consists of a hall with thousands of Buddhas carved on a rock. Along with this, a large statue of a tiger fills up the space, signifying the famous legend of Guru Rin Posh and the Tigris. Falling Water, or the Kaufman Residence, is one of the most famous private homes designed by architect Frank Lloyd Wright. Built in 1935, the house was designed to protrude over a waterfall on Bear Run in Stewart Township, Pennsylvania. Completed at a total cost of $155,000, including $4,500 for the home's all walnut furnishings alone, Falling Water instantly became an icon of American architecture. Hailed by Time Magazine as Wright's most beautiful job, it is listed among Smithsonian's life list of 28 places to visit before you die. Edgar J. Kaufman Sr., a department store magnate, and his wife Lillian commissioned Wright to design a weekend retreat on the family's land near the former Bear Run community southeast of Pittsburgh. Kaufman had been introduced to Wright by his son Edgar in 1934, when the latter participated in Wright's Taliesin Fellowship, a training program for architects and artists. Wright was 67 at the time of the meeting, with few commissions in the midst of the Great Depression. Luckily, Kaufman was relatively unaffected by the Depression, and he was able to commission this universally beloved building. Often referred to as the eighth wonder of the world, the Hagia Sophia in Sultanahmet is easily one of Istanbul's most impressive sites. Now functioning as a museum, the site also has one of the most tumultuous histories of any building in the world. Built in 537 AD at the beginning of the Middle Ages, it was famous in particular for its massive dome. It was the world's largest building and an engineering marvel of its time. It is considered the epitome of Byzantine architecture and is said to have changed the history of architecture. From the date of its construction in 537 until 1453, it served as an Eastern Orthodox cathedral and the seat of the Ecumenical Patriarch of Constantinople. Then, due to a power struggle in the church, it was converted into a Roman Catholic church. After the Crusades, Constantinople fell to the attacking Ottoman forces on the 29th of May in 1453. In accordance with the traditional custom at the time, Sultan Mehmet II allowed his troops and his entourage three full days of unbridled pillage and looting in the city shortly after it was captured. In this process, the Hagia Sophia was looted and eventually converted into a mosque. 
It existed in this form until 1935, when the first Turkish president and founder of the Republic of Turkey, Mustafa Kemal Ataturk, transformed the building into a museum. It now stands as one of the greatest examples of Ottoman architecture, though it still contains beautiful mosaics from its period as a church. Anthony Gaudi is one of the most iconic architects in history. His modernista movement is characterized by the predominance of the curve over the straight line, by rich decoration and detail, the taste for asymmetry, a refined aestheticism and dynamic shapes. His most famous work, La Sagrada Familia, stands 560 feet tall in the heart of Barcelona. Gaudi worked steadily on his masterpiece until his death in 1926, at which point an estimated 15 to 25 percent of the total design, including the crypt, the opposite walls, a portal, and a tower was complete. Since then, a series of architects have attempted to continue his legacy. Not surprisingly, progress on Sagrada Familia's construction has faced a few setbacks over the past 130 years. Vandalism in 1936 following the outbreak of the Spanish Civil War resulted in the destruction of many of Gaudi's models. The sacristy was destroyed in a fire in 2011. Though construction is set to finish in 2026, many already consider the Sagrada Familia to be one of the most classic buildings of all time.